Hey everyone, welcome back to NAB 2022. This is Doug, it's day three. Now I have got Peter here with Canon. He's gonna show me some new products today. Uh, one of the key ones here is the new Flex Zoom. There's two of them. This is the 45 to 135. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Tell me about this lens. We have two zooms in this set. We have a 20 to 50 and a 45 to 135. Both of these are gonna be a T24 all the way through the zoom. Mm -hmm. They do have full frame coverage and 8K resolve. So these lenses are gonna cover our sensor, our competitor sensors. These uh, have the metadata that will go through the EF mount. We also have the cook eye built in. We also have a port too. We have a four pin if you need that data to come out there as well. One of the biggest things about this lens is the mounts are user interchangeable. So you can buy the lens kit, the mount kit, and you can change that mount from EF to PL, 16 to 20 screws, four to five minutes. You change it on set, quick turnaround, ready for anything. That's huge. I mean, that, yeah, that opens up the compatibility a lot. Tell me, do you know anything about the optics, the, the coatings, anything special about that? From what I know, the coatings are going to be the same coatings and the same look you're going to get out of our primes, out of our other zooms. We also have the same outer diameter of these lenses, so all of your matte boxes that you would use on your primes or all of our other lenses are going to fit right on here. The gears are going to be in the same spot, basically between the 20 to 50 or the 45 to 135. Pull your fizz back, put your new lens on, throw it back in. Easy change, no problem. And one thing I, I truly enjoy too is there's minimal to no focus breathing. Yeah, I can't even see it. Nice. So now while we're talking cinema, um, I hear there's a new upgrade for the, or firmware update for the C70. C70, yeah. yeah. C70, we added raw recording internal for the C70. Sweet. So you get those three flavors of raw. You get the LT, the standard, and the HQ. Mm -hmm. And you also have interval and frame recording in the C70 now. It's something that people have been asking for, something we were gonna put a firmware update for because customer wants, give it to you, free firmware update, just go to the website. For the PTZs, we added a firmware update for that too. So we have FreeD, SRT, and the N500 and the N300. You can also use those as webcams. Right. So right. it would go through the ethernet port for the stream. And one thing we also added was the Mac search tool. So before it was just Windows search tool, so you'd have to have a Windows PC. Right. Now for all the Mac users, Mac owners, you can use the camera search tool and make it much easier to find that camera on the network. Cool, the lenses are looking great and looks like we got firmware updates everywhere. There's actually a few more. Um, I'm gonna move over to the broadcast lens area, so thanks for showing me this. Great to see you again. All right, so over here on the broadcast side, I've got Josh, he's gonna show me this behemoth of a lens. What am I looking at? So you're looking at our new UHD 122 AF. It's our 122 by with an additional feature of autofocus in it. This allows you to get your shot in focus quickly and accurately every time. Cool, now this is aimed, I, I gotta imagine this is sports, really yeah. intense broadcast needs, right? Basically, this is a sports lens. So you're, right. you're talking auto racing, football, anything where the action is fast and you need to get focus quickly, maybe far away, this lens is gonna assist you in get, getting to that shot accurately every time. I've got Brandon here. He's here to talk to me about the RF 5.2 F 2.8L dual fisheye lens. So this is our, our first appearance at NAB with this lens. You're able to capture 180 degree VR content uh, with two beautiful uh, optical lenses here uh, that give you a stereo capture. So with the use of a headset, for example, uh, you're able to see a very unique image. When you use our software, you're able to convert that to a uh, corrected image that it's not distorted like a fisheye image, right. and it's actually uh, eco-rectangularly converted. Uh, it's a f2.8 to f16 aperture. It has some of the, the top uh, Canon technologies for the lens, uh, including uh, you know flare uh, reduction technology, uh, so you don't have ghosting and flare when you're actually shooting in some really bright light source areas. Uh, there is uh, an outstanding uh, optics in there that is an L-series product, fully weather sealed and combining that capability with our 8K recording capability with our EOS R5 and R5C. I was gonna say, that makes sense why you have the R5C here. Yeah. You, you have two hot rods of cameras right. uh, with a whole bunch of resolution and a lot of firepower. Yeah. Um, is there anything, is this all kind of contained? Is there anything you need to do camera-wise, settings-wise to shoot with it? That's a great question. So before this lens came out, oftentimes for a VR uh, 180-type capture, mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a situation where you'd have uh, two separate lenses, two separate cameras, right, or right. two separate image sensors, and they would write two separate video files. 
into two separate cards. Possibly. Synchronizing is hard. So it's the synchronizing, the positioning often was very, very challenging. Uh, you'd also have a much larger form factor because you had two separate cameras or two separate image sensors that would be in that product. With this, we're really exploiting that 8K resolution image sensor to put uh, two images onto that image sensor. And as a result, you're getting one video file that's written to your card. So this lens is an RF mount lens. If I power this down real quick, you'll notice that it's an RF mount. Oh yeah, look at that. And very, very easy to use. If you notice how small this is, it is extremely compact, very lightweight. You can very easily go from shooting your EOS R5 or EOS R5C camera uh, for still photos at you know 45 megapixel images, shoot some video files with your, your normal lens, like a 7200, and then simply put this on, and now you have uh, a camera that's capable of shooting 180 degree VR uh, all in one package. Is that comfortable? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, just want to be respectful of the cool hair. <laughs> You're having a good hair day, my friend. It's been a good week. Incredible, that's cool. Yeah, I've not admittedly shot too much VR, but knowing that it's all together does make it less daunting. And I like that you guys got the plugins. So it's, I imagine, less of a manual endeavor, even on the post side. Cool, so thanks for showing me that. Great to see you, Doug. Yeah, same. Okay, moving along, we are at displays, and I have David here from Canon to talk about a new DPV 1830, is it? That's Tell correct. me a little bit more about this display. The DPV 1830 is an 18.4 inch reference display with a peak luminance of 1000 nits and black levels down to 0.005. So that gives you one million to one contrast ratio. Perfect. And that's a real, that contrast ratio figure is really important for HDR. Canon has been making HDR reference displays for about six years. And this 18 inch is, is our latest display. And the reason why that we create this play is primarily for two markets. One is broadcast and, and engineering and trucks and sports. Mm -hmm. But the second is for, as a field display for cinema. Yeah, so show me what you got. Sure, for the V1830, we introduced a new firmware, which has a tremendous amount of new features, which will help you analyze your HDR or SDR signal information. So we have a nice jog dial here, which can go through the uh, different menus, but you don't have to go through all the menus in order to access these features. We have a really nice set of eight function keys for yeah. quick access to the same feature set. Really, to summarize what we have introduced, we have a, what's called a multi-view informa information screen, and this will give you a quick oh, overview cool. of all the, tr all the value-added tools that you have built into this display. We charge nothing more for these tools. So we have an RGB parade. Uh, the parade is our latest feature. We've had the waveform in our displays for quite a while, but the parade gives you an overview of the color separated by ch color channel. And that can, of course, show you the bias of what your scene is uh, for the color information, whether it's a warm scene or a cool scene. This is a great tool for colors, especially. We have a vector scope. We have... Um, Gamut, I see. Yes, a really unique tool. Yeah. Only now in the 1830s. I, I was very surprised to see yes. that. That's cool. Yeah, we have a, we've, we've had a pixel cursor, but this gamut tool can can really show you the differences between what your what your color volume is for Rec 709 SDR or for Rec 2020, and some most of this material that you're seeing now actually falls in the you know in Rec 709, right, right, the colors right. for Rec 709. However, you can see what's really interesting and important is what falls into Rec 2020 because you want to see what HDR is giving you or is not giving you. Uh, we have the frame luminance monitor which here is above that, and that frame luminance monitor will give you a running average of what your luminance is in nits. Nits is a, is a value for luminance, uh, really a short form for candelas per meter squared. And we also have a pixel cursor, which is a really important way to, to uh, just see oh, where wow. you're, yeah. You can get specific. Specific pixel information. Wow. This is great for Q&A quality quality um, checks, and uh, you can see the, the luminance when you're in HDR for in candelas Candelas per meter square of nits, and you can also uh, do frame grabs uh, to to a USB thumb drive, which is you may not see it here, but there's oh, yeah. a USB port here. You can grab screen captures uh, for for any frame uh, on the fly by just just uh, just pressing a function key, as long as you have that feature assigned to that function key. You know, when we have 
you and me watching the same image, we could see the same colors, but if it doesn't have good viewing angles, you're gonna see one color. Oh, absolutely. And I'm gonna see another color. Right. So they designed a special optical element for the 1830, which will allow a greater degree of consistent image uh, perception and for both color and, and luminance. That's amazing. Vitally important. For the uh, clients too, especially. Because yes. they're you know, offset from you. Yes, yeah. there's usually a director, producer, right. pe you know, multiple people viewing the same image and for us to agree on what color it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the important. We have all these tremendous software tools, but I, I want to stress that the real importance of this display and why it can, it's gonna meet a lot of your customers' needs is the wide viewing angle, the wide color gamut, and the superior contrast with this display this from the blacks, cool. the highlights. So this is now part of a greater family of displays, right? That's correct. Like I mentioned, Canon has been making reference displays for you know over six years. Right. And this is just a family of, of, of reference displays that all have 12G. We have a 24-inch model, uh, the V2411, a 31-inch model, the V3120, and all the current models have 12G SDI inputs for them, as well as HDMI 2.0A for 4K inputs. These all look incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you for showing me. Thank you. Bruce. All right. And thank you for coming oh, to the Canon reference. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. We're going to move along with the rest of NAB 2022. Come along.